Hi guys, uh, welcome to another informative edition of Moggy's Life Hacks. I've uh, been looking forward to this one. Today we're going to be doing a curry. Uh, curry is my favourite food and um, I wanted to share it with you and show you how I make a traditional style, um, North Indian style uh, Indian curry. Um, so what I've done is I've went to the bother of um, preparing each of the ingredients and putting them on uh, dishes in a timeline if you like so that you can see exactly what goes in before we're going to use it um, and then it'll be easy for you to refer back to the video and have a look at, uh, at each at each part before we use it and makes it make sense and uh, quite easy to follow so if we have a look here and um, the first thing that we're going to use is some um, oil it's just vegetable oil you could use rapeseed corn oil um, sunflower oil, uh, even mustard oil, which is quite commonly used in Indian cooking. Um, here we have now these ingredients that I'm going to give you. Um, the quantities, um, the quantities that I'm going to give you are per person, which I think is always the most sensible way of doing it. And then that way it's quite easy for you to upscale it if you're going to um, cater for for more guests or, or or if you've got a bigger family or whatever. Um, so back to the oil. Uh, so for the oil uh, per person. Two tablespoons of oil per person, which seems, sounds like a lot, but curries are uh, not really a diet food, let's say. Um, and here we have uh, cumin seeds, these are fresh cumin seeds, um, sorry, uh, dried cumin seeds. And we're going to need uh, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds per person. So this is one teaspoonful of cumin seeds. Um, next, onions. Now, uh, this is very important. Um, curries are all about all about the onions. Um, uh, you want to use a brown onion, um, which is your your typical onion that you get in the supermarket. They're usually about the size of a tennis ball. Um, you don't want to be using a red onion. You don't want to be using shallots. And you don't want to be using Spanish onions, which are the really big ones. They're about the size of a grapefruit. Um, so none of those other ones have the the punch and the strength of flavour that you need to get the depth of flavour that a curry has. So it's got to be a brown onion, um, and what we've got per person is half a brown onion. So this is here, what we have on the plate there, uh, this is uh, a, a meal for two that I'm making, so uh, we have one full brown onion uh, finely diced. Um, and there's part of the video to show you how to do that as well. Um, on to the dry spices that we're going to use. Now, I've kept this really basic. Um, I want to make this curry from ingredients that you've got readily available, um, either in your cupboard or easily picked up at the local supermarket, um, but with a few twists just to elevate it above um, above the, the, the usual thing that you would create from a jar or, or whatever. Um, so what we've got here is again per person, half a teaspoon of salt per person, quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric per person, and one teaspoonful of curry powder per person. Now what I'm using here is a medium curry powder. Um, I, find, I find that that's just a nice strength for me. But you could use mild um, if, if you don't like it spicy or you could even use hot if you, if you like it spicy. Okay, now on to the wet ingredients that we're going to use. You've got one teaspoonful per person of ginger paste or fresh ginger. But this is fresh ginger that I've used here and I've grated it into teaspoonful quantities. So one teaspoonful of fresh ginger, one teaspoonful of garlic per person, one teaspoonful of tomato puree per person. Okay, and we have one chicken breast per person, so that's diced. Okay, and then we have chopped tomatoes per person, quarter of a tin or one cup full if you like of, of top chopped tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes if you want. Um, just uh, again about a cup full um, of, cho of chopped tomatoes um, 125 millilitres of chicken stock or vegetable stock you could even just use water if you like but uh, I think, find it's, uh, it's tastier if you use a little bit of chicken stock ok so that's 250 mils we have, we have here it's 125 mils per person ok and we have half a teaspoon full per person of garam masala um, readily available at your supermarket. This is um, a North Indian style uh, spice 
which is made from warming spices such as cinnamon, clove, uh, black cardamom, um, and this is going to create a uh, turn this curry, this traditional curry, and steer it in the direction of the North Indian style um, cuisine, um, along with the, the turmeric there and the cumin seeds at the beginning. Um, so curry, as as I mentioned, curry is all about the onions. You really you got to you've got to fry those onions um, for a lengthy period of time. You want to get a lot of colour on the onions, you're caramelising them if you like. Um, so you get a lot of depth of colour in there and a lot of concentrate concentration in the flavour, and that's why it's important to have the the correct onions, the the brown onions. Um, okay, so. Let's move on to making this curry, almost forgot, sorry, uh, fresh coriander. And this is just going to be added at the end, just before we serve it, or just even once you've served it, and just you can tear some over the top. Um, and this is just going to lift it and give it that little bit of, uh, of zing. There's other things that you could add to this curry, as I say, um, but I've tried to keep it to the essentials. Um, I think in the original recipe I had fenugreek leaves and things like that. Um, there was some of our spices in the in the dry in the dry part, but you really don't need them. Curry powder at the end of the day is just a mix of um, Indian spices: turmeric, ginger, um, coriander, um, cumin, um, black pepper, cardamom. There's all sorts of different things in there. So really, you could just make this curry. Even forget about the turmeric. You could just make this curry just with the curry powder. But I like the the turmeric. Just steers it as I say in the direction of the North Indian style. Um, and this is all readily available to you. So let's go ahead and make the curry and uh, we'll see how it's done. Okay folks, so we're just going to chop the onion for the curry. Just to show you how to finely dice the onion. You take the top off it, turn it over, and just tear off the little roots at the bottom. I'm just going to cut that straight down the middle there, into two halves. And you can quite easily remove the skin of the onion. Like that, and just get rid of those. Okay, it doesn't matter if you take away the first layer of the onion with it. That's not going to, we're not going to miss that. Okay, so now we've got the two halves of the onion there, and you want to leave the bottom roots attached for the moment. It's going to make your job easier. So you're just taking your knife, and you're slicing down quite near as close to the roots as you can with the point of the knife and just about a centimeter at the most between each of your cuts and you've got that onion then into fingers if you like okay then you're going to lie it down flat again and just hold it gently like a like you're holding a, a, a computer mouse or a tennis ball and once you've got it firmly there you're doing the same again across those incisions and that's going to dice your your onion quite finely and just try to keep them all roughly to the same size same distance apart the cuts so that when they're frying they're going to fry evenly and then you've just got the the root that's left there and then you're just going to repeat that process for the the rest of the onion and just watch your fingers try to hold the, your fingers down the way so that if the knife does come near your fingers then it's going to slide down your fingernail instead of cutting across your finger okay and that's those onions diced fairly finely and that's going to form the basis of your curry sauce. Okay. So now we'll move on. Now we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, folks. So we're just going to get started now. So we'll get the uh, heat on the on the cooker here. So I'm using the the biggest ring on the highest heat here to get some heat quickly into this pan. And we're going to add our oil. This is four tablespoons of vegetable oil. So there's uh, two per person in there. Again, it sounds like a lot, but this is really what you need to make the curry correctly. Okay, so we're going to bring bring that oil up to up to um, 
quite a hot temperature, we really want it on the verge of smoking um, so that when we add the, the cumin seeds, those, these are the first ingredient we're going to put into the pan besides oil when we put these cumin seeds in, what we want to happen is we want them to crack as soon as they hit the oil um, and that's going to release all the um, essential oils that are held inside these cumin seeds um, so as soon as that, that oil is hot enough, we're going to dump a lot of these in here and then it's very important to get the onions in immediately uh, because what we don't want is we don't want to burn the cumin seeds or you'll end up with a, a bitter taste um, in the curry. Uh, so uh, as I say, the essential thing about uh, any curry is the onions and also timings. So onions and timings, the rest really is just going to steer it in the direction of a different style of curry. Um, so the way you can test if the oil is hot enough is you can just take a couple of seeds and drop them in. Now, if you can see there, those seeds are not doing anything and there's no noise, they're not sizzling. This is quite a heavy pan that we've got here, so it might, might take a while for that to, to come up to heat. So uh, we can test it again in a minute just to see um, if the oil is hot enough. Okay folks, so I think the oil's about hot enough now. We'll put in a couple of seeds and those are sizzling and floating to the surface of the oil right away. So what we'll do now is we'll pop these seeds straight in. I can hear them starting to pop, so we'll put these seeds in here. I can hear them starting to crack immediately. So those seeds are, are cracking. There we go. And now what we want to do is put the onions in immediately to cool the pan. And now that the onions are in there, we want to now turn that down to a medium heat. Give it a quick stir. And the smell is absolutely fantastic. Um, when you when you do this for the first time and you've got the oil hot enough, the, 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 the waft of the um, the smell of the toasting cumin seeds and onions is, is fantastic. It smells like you're right out of the back of an Indian restaurant. Okay, so we'll put this down now to just above, just below medium on the big ring. And what we want is to fry these onions now until they're nice and golden brown. And that can take about 10 minutes, maybe even as much as 15 minutes, depending on uh, the amount of people you're cooking for. There's a lot of uh, a lot of water held in onions, so you want to evaporate a lot of that off and, and brown onions nicely. Um, to, to get maximum flavour. Okay folks, so I've got plenty of colour on these onions now if you have a look. And they're nicely browned. So there's lots of flavour in there in there now. So what we want to do is we will now want to add the dry spices, which were the salt, the turmeric and the curry powder. And put that in there. And we're going to dry, dry fry those with the onions. Now, Again, this is on, still on the biggest ring, but on the lowest heat. And we're toasting these spices in with onions now. And the smell is absolutely glorious. Now, we don't want to do this for longer than a minute, because we don't want to burn the spices, and that would ruin the curry. We'd have to start again. So, with the same token, you don't want to be adding um, the powdered spices and not toasting them. If you, if you, put, in your wet, if you put your wet ingredients in first, you're not going to be able to fry the, the dry spices in. So you really, you've got to be a, you've got to be frying these dry spices for around a minute in with the onions um, to get them toasted. And the smell is fantastic. Okay, so that's about a minute now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the wet ingredients to, to stop the, the dry ingredients from burning. So we've got here the tomato puree. We've got the garlic paste. You could use um, fresh garlic. Um, if you're going to use fresh garlic, I would say uh, two cloves per person would be equivalent roughly to um, a, the teaspoon full of paste per person. And this is the fresh ginger or fresh ginger paste. Okay, so that's going to cool that down a little bit now. We're keeping it on the lowest heat on the big ring and we're frying in those wet ingredients. And now what we're getting, if you have a look, is something close to a curry paste that you would uh, sometimes maybe see uh, in a jar um, in the supermarkets, which are actually pretty decent, but 
it's nice. There's something nice about doing it yourself and getting this concentrated paste that you've made here. And you can um, you can make that to your own taste, as I said, with the, the different strength of um, curry powders. Okay, so we've got that paste there now. And we can fry that for a minute or two. Um, I'm happy to I'm happy to to, to stick my, my chicken in there now. So here we go, there's the two breasts of, of chicken. Now what we want to do at this point, because that's going to cool the pan a lot, we want to fry the chicken on the highest heat, on the big ring, in with the paste, and that's going to brown the chicken for us. So move this round to, to coat the chicken and the spices and the, the paste, and it's going to absorb all that lovely flavour as it browns. Or as it seals rather, it's just going to seal the seal the chicken, keep the moisture in there, so your chicken's going to be succulent. If you if you cook the chicken too long and slow without without first feeling it on a high a high heat, you'll lose a lot of the moisture out of the chicken and your chicken will be very dry. So this is why we've got the the high heat on there just now to, to seal the moisture into the chicken. Okay folks, so that's our chicken nicely sealed. So if I have a look now, that's that's the chicken being frying for a couple of minutes in the, in the very hot, the hottest heat on the big ring. So we've turned that down now to the lowest heat on the big ring. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add our chicken stock. And I'm going to stir that around just to deglaze the bottom of the pan. There's a lot of a lot of the spices and the paste stuck a little bit to the bottom of the pan. It's not burned. It's just uh, this is just deglazing the pan with the with the nose of the spatula there. And there's a lot of flavour in there that you want to to be in the sauce. So you don't. You also you don't want it to burn and stick any more to the bottom of the pan. So it's good to use a stock to um, to do that. You can actually see the stock thickening a little bit there. With the uh, with the spices and the paste from the bottom of the pan, okay. Now now that that's done, we're going to add now as well the um, the tomatoes, chopped tomatoes. So that's half the tin of chopped tomatoes. So again, so it's quarter of a tin um, or one cup of chopped tomatoes per person. And we're going to stir that through. Anytime you're cooking anything with tomatoes, whether it's a whether it's a curry or um, a pasta sauce. Anything at all, tomato soup, anything that's got tomatoes in it, you never want to boil it. If you boil it, you'll you'll make the tomatoes go very very sour and bitter. Um, so you want to keep this on the on the lowest heat now, and you want to simmer this for fifteen minutes. And at that point, your um, your chicken will be will be thoroughly cooked. Okay, so just the low heat on the big ring there. And that's going to simmer away and intensify those flavours in the sauce. So we'll come back to that in a, in a little minute. The stock will reduce, so leave the, leave the lid off the pot to, to let some steam off and reduce that sauce a little bit. And we'll see what it's like at the end. It'll be delicious. Okay guys, so as you can hear, the beeper is going for the 15 minute mark for our, our curry, so it's simmering away nicely there. Just the last spice is the garam masala, which you just put in at the end here and just stir through. And as if the smell wasn't good already, that is just gives it that last little touch. It just makes it absolutely smell wonderful. So we can turn off the heat there. And that curry is pretty much ready to serve. And the last little touch I'm going to do is just take some fresh coriander and just tear that up and add that a few leaves to the curry. So as you can see there, that just makes it look nice and fresh. We can stir that through. And what I've got here is just an Indian iron pan called a karai. You don't need this, but it's a nice way to serve it if you've got one of these. And you can ladle your you can ladle your finished curry in there ready to serve.
Heavy with that. That looks good enough to eat. So, we've already done our, um, our basmati rice video. So, how about you check out the basmati rice video and rustle yourself up a curry. And, and there you go. Uh, and a traditional Indian style curry and basmati rice. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. There's a whole load more where that came from. Uh, and please let me know what you think of my videos. Um, if there's any suggestions you've got, uh, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching.